Staten Island. And if you're a grand jury, a juror, and I say, ladies and gentlemen, we have something you don't normally hear. Here's the target of the investigation, the cop. And he, and he takes a stand and he says, I was, this is the Michael Brown case, I was placed in fear. I was placed in fear and I reacted because I thought I was saving my life. Okay, good. He testifies. Now, remember, his lawyer can't cross-examine. Mm -hmm. he, he's just there. Uh, grand jurors can ask questions. And that brings up an important point, Lionel. If you were his defense attorney, would you allow your client to go testify before a grand jury where you could not be present no. where everything he says is going to be on the record? Would you let him talk for four hours if you didn't believe that the prosecutor was on his side? <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't let anybody testify ever. Yeah, they typically don't do that, yeah. But, but what happens is, you see, look, and I know how this looks. It's like, hey, listen, why don't you come and testify and uh, we'll, uh, I'll ask you some simple questions and uh, we'll basically load it up. Mm -hmm. Until a grand jury says, wait a minute, I was there and we declined to prosecute, not because we were set up, but we didn't think there was probable cause. Now, again, the probable cause standard is so slight. And whenever probable cause is not had, you wonder what was so special. But let me go back to now jumping back to the Eric Garner case. What in this particular case, if the medical examiner said, I cannot tell you right now whether this death was caused because of a chokehold, because of a pre-existing medical condition, or it was a, uh, a, a t the, the time to go. Let me back up. Mm -hmm. Medical examiners determine four types of death. There are four types of death, period. Think of the mnemonic NASH, N-A-S-H. Natural, accidental, suicide, or homicide. That's it. So when a medical examiner says this cause of death was homicide, that means it was a death caused by or because of the action of another. In fact, people who were executed, People who receive the death penalty on their death certificate, it says cause of death, homicide, because you're killed. All right. right, and that's what the medical examiner said in the case of Eric Gardner, that right. it was homicide. Yes, go ahead. It wasn't natural death. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an accident, and it wasn't suicide. So natural, I mean, so therefore there was a human, a human connection. But this particular case, the police officer who was under department regulation unable to do a karate restraint or chokehold which in fact it may or may not be that's not against the law so what happens is i'm telling you right now there is no evidence of murder there is no crime here there may be negligence now remember there's different fora different forums there's the criminal arena the civil arena, that's the lawsuit. That's where you seek monetary damages, big bucks for wrongful death and loss of society, the loss of a father, the loss of a husband. And then there's federal, either federal civil rights or some other federal crime. Just because there is no evidence to prove a crime in that there was no evidence of murder, involuntary manslaughter, does not mean that he's at all off the hook when it comes to civil. I'm telling you right now, this is a civil slam dunk. Let me also throw in, there's administrative because he most probably will be bounced off of the NYPD because he violated this rule. So but you would say, so Judge Napolitano said he thought it was clearly a case of criminally negligent homicide. You would say that in your opinion, you think it's civilly negligent homicide. Oh yes, because mm -hmm. right now I could say, this is not, you see, this is a police officer who did not pick somebody out of a crowd, who decided on his own to be excessive. This is a police officer, right or wrong, who was in essence ordered to try to restrain someone and he would testify at trial. He did it because he was following the department's directions. He swore an oath to follow not only the law, but his, the orders of his, of his superiors. And he was told, we have an arrest. Let's do it like we've done it a thousand times in training. So this police officer would testify, I'm not acting rogue. I'm not going off the reservation. The only thing I did that was negligent was later on. Now, this is where it gets interesting. 
if there was, if a jury believed, you know, we were with you, officer, until we believe that you heard him say, I can't breathe. Yeah. At that point, you should have let go. At that point, you should have, using all standards of care, realized that you were going too far. Maybe then there's a negligence portion of it. Or maybe the, at the point at which he loses consciousness, they try to do something to administer some CPR or, or something like that. I, I want to get uh, give Paul Joseph Watson a chance to get in because I've been dominating the conversation with you. It's fascinating. Paul, was there anything, how, how do you feel about this? And did you have any question for uh, Lionel? Yeah, I wanted to get back to this issue about police brutality, the causes of police brutality, because I think this is what we're being misdirected from. These officers are acting in accordance with their training, and that's the main problem, because their militarized training, which is being directed to them by the federal government, is not to de-escalate. It's to immediately resort to violence, and then when they're exonerated in these cases, it only gives them more confidence to act in the same manner in future situations like we saw with the Eric Garner case. And my article on InfoWars posted a few hours ago, we have police in actual police forums, verified members of the uh, law enforcement departments across the country, saying that this decision in the Ghana case justifies them being able to, quote, kick some thug ass. So they're taking this as a sign that everything they do is justified, again, legitimizing police brutality within police departments. So we have a problem centered around violence and the justification of violence both in the police department and also in the black community. And this is what is not being discussed because it's being hijacked and it's all being directed towards a debate about race. You've got FBI crime statistics which show that black people commit almost the same number of homicides as whites and Hispanics put together, despite the fact that they only represent 13% of the population in America. Also, 93% of blacks are killed by other blacks. Again, despite the fact that they're only 13% of the population. So is this because of their skin color? No. Just as because in the case of police, they resort to violence not because of their skin color. This is about an endemic problem of violence within both police departments and the black community. So the way that this has been hijacked, and it's all about race, it's all about white privilege, which again, in the case of Kelly Thomas and James Boyd, they couldn't exercise their white privilege to save them from their fate. This is the point. It's all being misdirected. What we should be focusing on is the training that law enforcement is getting, which makes them resort to violence immediately, as well as the culture within the black community that promotes this criminality, which is hyped and promoted by white-owned entertainment companies, which glamorize this thug life culture through rap and hip-hop. Mm -hmm. None of this is being addressed now that the social justice warriors have hijacked this case and basically turned it into Occupy 2.0. This is being used as a divisive tool to turn us away from the problem of violence in both the police community and the black community towards just squabbling with each other over side issues about white privilege. So I wanted to get Lionel's take on that. I could not have said it better, uh, my dear friend, that I will not try to. Let me tell you that imagine this hypothetical. We have a series of doors. In this door, we can discuss the grand jury problems, anomalies, and the like. In this door, we can talk about inherent problems within African American culture, blah, blah, blah. In this door, we can talk about the hypermilitarization of the police. In this door, we can talk about training. In this door, and you're right. Now, the problem is that when we change doors in mid-sentence and go from police argument to race in a society that is not able to handle critical thinking, in a society with this mamby-pamby, almost cartoonish media who cannot handle this, throw into the mix, this is a rather complex situation. Now, what you said, Paul, I agree with 100%. There has been, and you know, in this country, let's back up. There has been a firewall by design from Posse Comitatus in 1878 to our loathing of, of, of the standing armies, a firewall between civilian law enforcement and military. 
I've often said, if you do not like being a police officer, if you don't like, as we say in, in New York on all the police cards, you see CPR, courtesy, professionalism, and respect. If you don't want to read rights, if you don't want to take down names and be courteous and be a peace officer or a constable, then join the military. Go someplace where you can engage the military, start shooting when you're told to. Because police officers involve a certain skill set that military doesn't. And what happens is when you throw into the mix this idea through 1033 programs, MRAPs, automatic weapons, from when, when Sheriff Andy turns into RoboCop, and you have this crew-cutted, mirrored glasses, heavily armored look when you have the Boise Police Department having urban assault commando trucks, when you have this other attitude, and this is, this is what I've heard, well, how dare this man, Eric Garner, dare resist arrest? Now, resist arrest can be, and Paul and uh, uh, David, we've seen this, when somebody asks a police officer, why am I being arrested? You're resisting. Yeah. Or takes a picture. He's arrested. This is a country, we've seen it from TSA, from gate rapes, from airports. We have seen the, so, the slow, systematic, systemic, heightened militarization on all levels. It's gotten so bad that even in schools, little kids who point fingers are, in essence, arrested in the school system. So we have become this hyper- law and order on steroids mentality. That, I agree, Paul, is another avenue. Because I'm sure that if we look to other cultures, other police departments, other countries, other, they have their, their, their uh, store of, of, of thugs and the like. And we have, by virtue of this, let me throw in another problem. When the social media, and God bless protest, but when the momentum of the meme starts, when somebody says it, I know this. You know how many times I see people running around here who are thrilled to be a part of the protest. Hey, we're going to Grand Central. Come on, get your phone out. Let's Instagram this. This is, I'm not saying people are not sincere, but there is a celebration sometimes. There's Hang on, Lionel. we got to take a break. We'll be right back. And as you're talking about the militarization of the police and we're talking about the training, maybe there's a question if would the system have liability if they found these police officers guilty because they trained them to act that way. We'll be right back with Lionel and Paul Joseph Watson from the UK. Stay with us. This hour brought to you by InfidelBodyArmor.com. When it hits the fan, don't be left without the body armor that will save your life. With prices starting at just $374.99 and ships free. Get yours at InfidelBodyArmor.com. Just won't quit. Hi, Ted Anderson with Midas Resources. Is it time to convert paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver yet? Get our 10 Reasons book free. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Mom, I can't do my math homework. I just don't get it. I hate math. <sighs> I've always tried to be a good mother, but when it came to Jamie's math, I was at a loss. Then a friend told me about Math Made Easy DVDs. Concepts are simplified in an easy way to follow and review, and students can learn at their own pace in the convenience of home. Listen, in the frustration, call Math Made Easy. Call now, 1-800-USA-MATH. That's 1-800-872-6284. Or visit us at mathmadeeasy.com. Did you know by age 50, half of all men have an enlarged prostate? This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now, because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1-800-852-1820. In clinical trials, the ingredient in Super Beta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate, improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1-800-852-1820. That's 1-800-852-1820. 
Call 1-800-852-1820. I'm Wyatt.